My fellow travelers, welcome back to the LZ, and I wanted to do a quick thing on my dreams project. I've been getting a lot of requests, both on Twitter, at the LZ tweets, while that site is still alive somehow, and of course in my comment sections. Uh, it's weird that I haven't covered dreams a lot lately, because I uh, my first video, my one and only dreams video, got like 12k views. Uh, and it was around my horror project uh, that I've been working on. Uh, and so uh, I kind of wanted to show off a little bit of that. But the focus of today's project is uh, I want to see uh, and kind of showcase how you can get an environment like the inside of a room to have a sort of Silent Hill other world vibe to it, right? So uh, I think I'm going to reference something like a Silent Hill 3, Silent Hill 4 type of aesthetic, like a red, rusty, old, moldy, uh, sort of rundown uh, aesthetic, kind of like what I have with just a regular uh, environment. So uh, I did show this room uh, originally in my first video, and uh, I kind of want to just do a quick tutorial. Now, heads up, this is on PlayStation 4 Pro. And for PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, obviously, we're going to be doing a lot of work with sticker mode today. Sticker mode is a new feature that allows you to sort of add additional detail to sculpts that already has sort of like a copy-paste thing without uh, sort of raising the thermo or the gameplay thermo for these things. So uh, I'm going to focus on our kitchen Today, So as you can see, and uh, I can go through and just take a quick look, I'm kind of working on the aesthetic of uh, this place so far, right? You can see that I've kind of got my, kind of got my fog nailed down a little bit, still experimenting with that. I'll probably do a video on that here at some point, but fog has been a giant stress point for me. And uh, now, as you could see, I'm making some progress here. So uh, more on fog later, because I do want to talk about that a little bit more. But uh, let's focus on kind of Silent Hillifying this kitchen, right? So as you could see, this is a fairly early part of my game project here. The game doesn't have a name. It's still Project Bystander, if you kind of caught that video from back in the day, right? So uh, a lot of, lot of good work going on here. Um, my headlamp is looking good, right? Little detail work still uh, going on. But let's get into it then. And uh, here's what I want to focus on, right? Let's just jump right into it. So you can see I've got two walls here. Let's focus on the walls first. Uh, so I'm going to go and we're going to take a look at the text displayer. The text displayer is going to be your sticker mode type of functionality, right? Now, we're going to add stickers to everything in here, but a caution, right? If you're using sticker mode, it can get a little pricey on performance, right? Which is, I could be capturing this on PS5, but I would rather capture it on PS4 Pro just to kind of show you what kind of performance hitches and things that you might run into. I mean, right now, this game is currently at about 75% thermo. And there's actually quite a lot of optimization and a lot of... I mean, it's a, it's a medium-sized room, to be fair, but there's a lot going on outside, right? Some detail work outside and things like that. Some detailing, like, the deck here. Um, but I'm going to go back to my text gadget. And let's just start experimenting, right? I'm going to stick it to that wall there. Uh, I'm going to turn on uh, the studio mode here, too, to really brighten things up and kind of focus on the detail. Uh, so funny thing is, uh, this room is serving as a sort of central hub for the entire game. Every exit door, there's, there's three exit doors in the entire house, uh, and each one of them goes a separate path for the game. Just a little bit of a teaser for you there for the future of the project. Um, but this actually, fun fact, this place is a place that I used to live. Uh, and it is modeled almost completely directly from that uh, place in Wisconsin, right? So it's got kind of a Wisconsin-y vibe to it. But text displayer, right? We're not going to add any text. I'm going to add a quick letter, and then I'm going to delete it because I think there's a bug or something that makes it to where the feature here in the secondary menu doesn't allow you to use auto fit without having something in there. Now, our text box is floating around in the world here. I'm going to 
obviously fix that up, right? Because we're going to put it in the scene and we're going to sticker mode here. Now, we only need it to be surface level, right? So I'm only going to make this as big as I need to for this wall, right? It doesn't need to be much bigger or thicker than that because I'm reading and I'm not fully educated on this yet and I'm not really fully experimented with it, but I'm hearing that if you have it to where it's sort of arbitrarily projecting into empty space that it's not really attaching itself to, then it's just going to eat up more performance. So as you can see, I'm kind of just taking up that wall here, right? Uh, so now I'm going to get rid of the border. We don't need that. We're going to come back to texture mode later because that's really going to be what makes this sing, right? Uh, we're going to leave shadows on and we'll be able to play with the shadows here too in a little bit. Uh, in kind of some fun ways that uh, are very Silent Hill-like. So uh, here, then, let's go to our sticker mode. And I'm going to go to sort of the standard paint mode here. And we're going to pick ourselves kind of a red. You know, you know that Silent Hill loves its sort of red vibes. Let's go with sort of a rusty red. And then from here, we've really got a sort of play around with the textures a little bit. We're going to make our textures strong. And then as you can see already, we've got kind of a, a big texture vibe going here. And then let's, let's pick some... Oh my, that's looking pretty good too, right? If we were to kind of move that around and get that going. I kind of like the aesthetic of that a little bit. The wall kind of has to be a different color that's not white. So probably like a like a black or a darker color would probably sell that pretty well. Now of course, this is brightly lit currently, so it's not it's not going to be super scary, right? But let's sort of leave that for a moment. And then I'm going to go into the sculpt and let's kind of make this a darker color. Because at that point, then you can really, you can really sell that aspect of it. So let's see. This bothers me a little bit there that it doesn't line up. I wish Dreams gave you defaults. So let's, let's make it. A little darker, right? So we're adding a grayish color. There. Let's stamp that bad boy on there. And we're going to turn off this mode here. And then we'll start it. So as you can see already, I'm going to turn it on to night mode as a matter of fact. Because most Silent Hill otherworld places kind of happen in the dark, right? So as you could tell already, now we have kind of a sort of a Silent Hill vibe, right? You could tell I got the film grain on. There's a little bit of a chromatic aberration going. But you can already see that it's kind of got the basis for a sort of Silent Hill vibe, right? Cool. But, and of course, you can make that different too in a lot of aspects, right? Let's go ahead and change the design here. And it's kind of blurry, right? Sometimes you got to really mess with these settings here. There you go. Kind of like that, right? Let's grow that a tad. And let's say we take away the red and we add a black, right? Let's go with a black type of color. And then, now what's even better too is that you can kind of mess with the opacity a little bit too, kind of independently of the, of the design. But and then of course we can kind of grow this design. Use your D-pad a little bit there to kind of get the adjustments that you want. And then, of course, uh, one of the better aspects of this is the shadows, right? So you can tweak the shadows, move the shadows a little bit, 
shadow opacity. They're really dark. I wish you could change the color of the shadows a little bit to kind of add a little more depth. You can add another sticker on top of this to sort of contrast it with a different color, but that's going to double your performance, and that is not optimal. That's not going to be the greatest way to do it. One other thing, too, that I really think is cool, you can animate this on the wall, right? If you could see, I'm sort of moving the shadow, right? And that's giving it sort of a, a, a movement, right? It's kind of neat. So if I take that, animate it, get it like a action recorder. Actually, let me bump this up a little bit. Then we'll start our action recorder. And then, you know, give a, a, a little bit of a freaky movement to it, right? Just give it a little bit in the, a little bit of a jerk there. And then let's end our recording. Turn off our studio lights. I hate studio mode when you go to actually play test it because it takes 20 years to turn off. But okay, so not only do we have just sort of a broken down, derelict looking place, right? We can add another sticker up there to kind of make it look good. But you can see that subtle animation there. Well, hopefully you can see it because the film grain is kind of high here. But it's giving it's giving a, just a moving vibe. It's kind of throbbing a little bit, right? It's kind of neat. Turn studio back on because we like our night mode. Now, let's focus on making these cabinets look kind of tough, right? So the trick to using a good sticker application is that you gotta have things grouped together, right? So I'm gonna select all these products here. Um, I'm gonna select the stove too, cause why not, right? Because the idea here is that we're gonna add sort of like a, a grainy sort of like growth to this stuff. So uh, we'll even add the countertop too, right? It's just to really sell it. So we've got all these things grouped together then. And I'm gonna go back to my sticker mode. Now this is where you're going to want to, let's sort of twist that down at like a sort of a 40 degree angle, right? Because we want to kind of capture everything. Now this is of course where you can kind of get yourself into trouble performance wise, because we're going to aim this, this downward. And we're going to try to capture all of these items. And again, this, remember your mileage is going to vary because you have to be very careful with uh, sort of your performance, right? Because it, it could come back to bite you. I'm gonna turn off our border. We're gonna go in world. We're gonna go sticker mode. And of course, this is where we can kind of try to capture all those territories. And you can already see it's kind of getting a lot of that stuff. The reason, it's also getting the wall too. The reason that is, is because I have not included the sticker gadget into the grouping yet. Once we do that, it will only capture those items in the group. Something to think about there. If it's starting to just kind of crap up your whole scene, uh, that's why. But we can figure that out here. This is some of the stuff that I spent a lot of my days doing in dreams. Um, some things that just never come to fruition because I'm just that darn picky <laughs> with how things look uh, in my game, right? Uh, so now, let's let's exit out of this for a moment. Let's add this and, oops, let's always get the item first, then the gadget. And then boom, when I group these, now you see that they've all got their sort of own individual texture there. Cool, let's, let's, go, let's go change this up because the, I want things to look kind of moldy. There we go. That's oh, that one's okay, but I think there's something a little more stringy here that we can use. That's a little better. I think there was something we could uh, use as well. Ah, there we go. That's good. Let's strengthen that texture a little bit. Now we can obviously pick ourselves a color. 
Let's go with like a white. And let's play around with that for a moment. Obviously, let's get our shadows up and running, right? Good shadows. We Now, you can see here the difference. I didn't capture this piece of the cabinet. Um, so you can see there's a, a contrast that I missed there. That's easily fixable because I can just go in and add that piece of the, ca the cabinets in. But so far, let's go back and play test this and just kind of get a quick look, right? Now, it's got a sort of dusty, grindy. Now, of course, that's probably not the best texture to use. We could probably use something else for that. But uh, at the end of the day, that's detail work that's very hard to find, right? That's And you would have to go and burn a ton of time painting all of these items individually. And... Uh, it would kill your thermo because it, it it you could see the detail on every one of these cabinets is different, right? It's it's got its own sort of individuality. The the it doesn't repeat, right? A lot of the problems that you have with dreams is that sure, sort of copying everything and using it like these. I've got two cabinets here, just two cabinet doors, just to kind of enhance the variation a little bit. But then that's probably like you know maybe half a point, a point, a piece. Uh, and so that that can get costly with your optimization, right? And so let's say let let's go and kind of make this maybe a little bit different. All right, let's dim it down a little bit um, because at that point you can you know kind of make it look old, dusty. Maybe you want to darken it up a little bit, right? Let's let's really darken it up. So now things kind of use look, look old and brutalized, and I don't think that carries the same effect, honestly. But it it looks kind of old and derelict, right? We kind of like that. Tweak to your pleasure, right, to see how that works for you. Now this is probably gonna. I must have missed an end here, but this this is kind of the design philosophy going in there is that you can get really creative with kind of how things look, right? It's it's. I really wish that there was a sort of bake feature that didn't like. I you could just set up your your sticker and then use a fixture like like a feature to bake it on and then delete the gadget so you're not projecting anymore. It just bakes on as paint. So that way, it's it's painted, right? That saves you some time. Media Molecule, if you're watching this, that's recommendation, right? Now, some of these walls are copied. So, you know, obviously, you would kind of want to copy it again, right? This big feature wall, I haven't figured out what to put here yet, and I'm getting kind of running out of, of thermo to get too detailed on things. Put myself a little coffee maker in there, right? You can really make this stuff sort of detailed and shine. And then this, this, of course, is just a quick and dirty, you know, uh, representation for that. But um, let's check out a different room here. I'm obviously not going to save this work. Now, here we have the master bedroom. Since we last took a look, it hasn't come a long way, but it does have a mirror, thanks to Elka for all of his hard work and helping me understand how mirrors work um, and getting, you know, sort of a simultaneous movement. Um, but you can see here, our bed has a little bit of texture, right? Our bed, uh, it, just a simple gray bed is kind of boring, right? So we're adding a little bit of a sort of a textured look to it. Our fog, yes, again, I'm super proud of this fog. I am so done stressing about this stupid thing because <laughs> fog in dreams is too, it just sucks. I'm sorry. It's too painterly and it's not, not good for a game like this, especially like a first person thing. But again, more on that later. We can do the same thing with these walls, right? And I've only, I've only got like one or two stickers in here already and that's on the bed. Mattress is looking pretty dope, right? Doing fabrics is kind of kind of fun and kind of tough at the same time, but uh, we can do that sort of same thing. Get the stickers out, and then just sort of start playing around with it, right? Let's get that in the world. 
you know you've been playing Dreams or something for too long when muscle memory takes over and you just know what buttons you're pushing. So forgive me for not flying through, or forgive me for flying through and uh, not really explaining what's happening here. I kind of yell at other Dream creators for doing that, and here I am being a total hypocrite. So i got a big old red palette here. This is an interesting design already, right? It's it's kind of contrasting the red for you a little bit. Maybe you can, ooh, that might look pretty good, right? Especially if you can animate it. You can't do shadows with the painterly textures though, unfortunately. So really the best you can do is kind of move it around if you're looking to animate it or, um, Kind of shift it around a little bit, right? And do you kind of give it a little bit of a sort of a shake, <laughs> right? Not a lot you can do on these. It's the standard ones that I like the most because then I can really get in there and sort of sort of play around with it. Ooh, that looks that looks kind of sick, actually. The white color for the wall isn't going to work the best. So again, right? The if you can change the color, kind of move that. Right? I wonder if we can kind of make like a yellow. That, would, that might be interesting. Oof, that kind of looks like it was painted by some like Martha Stewart type of... That's not going to work. Let's go back to the red. I like the red. And then I can, of course, go and copy all of these. Interestingly. Going to move these around a little bit. This wall doesn't like me because there's a big window in it. I don't have darkness working in this, uh, or maybe I do. I've got studio mode on, that's right. Aha, we do have darkness working. It just doesn't turn dark, it just turns the... <laughs> But we can fix that easily. Let, let's just make it dark in here. Boom. Just straight zero. And so you can already tell, like, with a little bit of work, the only thing that you're missing here is the ambience and the sound uh, and, like, the rust and the great fencing and stuff like that, right? But... It does give off kind of a, a Silent Hill vibe. Now, if I were to go in and make all these walls like gray or black, make them shiny a little bit, maybe put some extra animating flex on the wall and kind of make it pop a little bit. That That's kind of pretty, man. I love that. So that's just kind of the first way to just sort of Silent Hillify. Also, an another problem here. Whatever you do, if you have a mirror, whatever you do over here has to reflect over there. So uh, I might end up paying uh, for uh, whatever it is I do in here over there. Um, I'm already paying with the reflection. So I'm hoping you don't notice the sort of just flat colored fleck over there in the window. Sort of giving it a representation of a uh, sort of foggy window reflection out there to... Avoid the fact that there's a giant tree with leaves <laughs> out here. But uh, that's uh, that's my next dreams video for my horror project. It's coming along great. It's not exactly relevant to the topic of this kind of Silent Hill vibe I'm going for. But to kind of give you an idea, right? Uh, to kind of give you just a, a preview of what the game's kind of looking like now for those that have been following the project. Right, you see here, this is outside of the house from the dining room. And my fog 
is looking so good. Like, some folks kind of disagree with the kind of movement, right? But if you've seen, like, Silent Hill 2 and all that, you'll notice that there's just a lot of movement with, like, a volumetric fog. But this is not, this is just using flex to do this, right? The movement of the volumetrics, that's just one giant fleck. Uh, and then, of course, the sort of distance fog there. And of course, you know, the closer that you get to the neighbor's house, the, the more visible it is, but it fades away with kind of a gradient. I've kind of taken away the sort of banding that came along with it a little bit. So that's that's good. Here's some more stickers in action, too, on the deck. I replaced the deck, and the deck looks so much better. But you can see it's worn and dirty and black and maybe needs to be... It's given that sense of, like, hey, if an inspector were to come by and inspect your house, if you're selling it, he's going to be like, yeah, we're going to need to replace that deck, dog. That deck is uh, a deck. <laughs> it's a little worse for the wear, right? Uh, so uh, a little bit more on my dreams. If this project continues to be popular and people are checking these out, um, I'll, I'll make more. Uh I'm still kind of working diligently only by myself on this project. I haven't really asked anybody else to help me with this project other than maybe Elka coming in and and uh, advising on that. He's a great dream creator, by the way. Love his project, too. Uh, but for more, kind of hang out and uh, let me know what you think of what you saw today as far as detail work and the fog. I want to maybe make something else regarding the fog and stuff later on. But uh, thanks for coming to hang out in the LZ. See you in the next one.